in my most daring adventure so far, I'll confront the world's biggest cats to see just how I measure up. This isn't what you'd call a giant cat, but these certainly are. Look at this. These are three-month-old Siberian tigers. When they're full-grown, they will weigh as much as 65 domestic cats. Look at them. Come on, then. Domestic cats are sometimes not very careful and you can get scratched by them, but these tigers are so gentle. The claws are as long as my forefinger. There's about... <laughs> He's got about 30 teeth in his mouth. They're used to being in Siberia, where the temperature can be minus 30 for much of the winter. But like all cats, they love playing around in front of the fire. There are only three or 400 of these beautiful cats left in the wild. And that's my quest, to see the world's giant cats. Here in Africa, that's going to take me right into the lion's den. I don't just want to get close to big cats, I want to get right down with them, whisker to whisker, to see just how magnificent they are. You've got no idea of the size of them unless you have me for scale. And later, I'm going to meet a scientist who's going to let me get right at ground level with a pride like this of wild African lions. There are five giant cats in the world and I hope to meet every one of them. But first, a detour. Most people think the cheetah is a big cat, but in fact it isn't because of the noise it can make. Cheetah cubs are as playful as kittens. These are nine weeks old and they were orphaned because of a bushfire. Cheetahs normally have three to eight cubs. Although in the wild they won't all survive, lions are a major predator. Cubs have this wonderful mane of fur and they'll lose that as they get older and have the full spotted coat of an adult. Because of their size, these can grow to 1.5 metres, over five feet, with a tail that's half that length again. Cheetahs are often thought of as big cats, but they're not, and you can hear why. They can purr. There's 38 species of cats. 33 of them have got a special bone at the base of their throat, and they can purr when they make that brilliant noise, when they breathe in and when they breathe out. But the big cats, there's five of them, they only purr when they breathe out and they do something none of the smaller cats can. They roar. Of course, Africa does have some real, <laughs> real big cats. And this is one of the best places in the world to see the smallest of the pair, the Londolozi Reserve in South Africa. Leopards are so densely packed here, they can have territories as small as the size of just six soccer fields. But of course, You've got to find them in bush like this. I'm with Bruce Ush. He's been a ranger here for three and a half years. And if anyone can find them, he can. This place is the lap of luxury for leopards. There's so much prey. Impala make up more than half their diet. Just never know what's round the corner. These are diminutive button quail chicks. Look at them, they're barely bigger than my thumb. Just gonna give them a little. Come on, <laughs> look at that. Come on, mate. So they're not run over, I just chivy them into the grass. Come on. I can hear the mother calling over there. <laughs> they are gorgeous though, look at that. That's something you rarely see. There's so many distractions and we're going to stop again 
but at least this creature is named after a big cat. These are my favourites. They're named after the cats. They're leopard tortoises. There's the male there. <laughs> They're called that because look at the scoots. They're black and yellow like a leopard and that's how they get their name. This is a little male. He was courting the female. He's got a much bigger tail and he's got this concave beneath. That's so when he actually mates with her, he can fit on top of her shell. This is a great time of year for them. It's just rain, so there's plenty of salad on the veldt, and they do their mating and egg laying at this time of year before the dry season. The tortoises are so amorous. Me picking him up won't have stopped him. Look at him. She's not interested and he's nudging her, and maybe they'll eventually mate. When male tortoises mate, they make an extraordinary sound. Listen to this. Leopard tortoises, but where's the real leopard? Until now, when I've been in Africa, I've spent my time looking in holes for centipedes and scorpions, or turning over logs for snakes and lizards. This is the first time I've seen a wild leopard. And look at that. She is stunningly beautiful. The first of the big five cats. I've seen these in wildlife films so many times, but I've never really looked at them properly. Everyone thinks leopards can't change their spots, but they can. They go from black rosettes on the body to solid spots on the head. Like any cat, she uses her ultra-sensitive whiskers to help her see in the dark. They pick up the tiniest of vibrations. There's some impala over there. She's probably just, she's panting a bit. She's probably been hunting. Look at the beauty. They are so magnificent. There's nothing between me and the leopard and she could easily jump into the Jeep. But Londolosi leopards are used to being followed and she's just going about her business. She's spraying the bushes to leave a signal to males about whether she's ready to mate. She's scent marking, is that what she's yeah. doing there? She brushes up against it, then she'll squirt a little bit of urine. She's gone off road and soon proves that four wills aren't as agile as four paws. I hope we don't lose her. But this is my first wild leopard, and I'm desperate to stay on her tail. Does she look like she's hunting? She does. She's walking a lot, um, stuffing, looking, listening every now and then. And she could go up a tree to use that as a vantage. Yeah. Leopards are brilliant climbers. They often go up trees to scan the bush for prey. They're incredibly strong too, and can even drag a carcass three times their own weight right up a tree and out of reach of lions and hyenas. She's, oh, she's gone down there, even we can't follow her. No, it's just too, it's just too steep for us. It'd be like driving a car for cliff. Of course, she gave us a good run for our money though, but... That's how it happens. We've seen a leopardess, but I want to see a male leopard. They're much bigger and much more powerful. But first, we must negotiate a massive herd of Cape Buffalo. Just look at those formidable horns. There's something in the grass ahead, another leopard, and it's a male. They can weigh 200 pounds, that's about as heavy as I am, and including the tail, be over nine feet long. And there's a female following. She's much smaller, about two thirds his size. Unbelievable. Leopards are usually solitary, so this must be a mating pair. She's really showing off. And she's going down to the male now. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to see some matings. And she courts the male and, and then... Uh... Yeah, she'll, she'll actually go rub up against him. Although it's the female that does the chasing, once mating begins, it's the male that takes control. 
Over the next day or so, he'll probably mate over a hundred times. That increases his chance of fathering her cubs. He holds on by biting her neck, so for the female, mating can be uncomfortable, and she lets him know it. Brilliant. The first of the Big Cat Five. Big Cat number two is so elusive, I'm cheating behind glass at the Zoo de Doux in France. The handsome snow leopard lives high in the mountains of Central Asia. Some scientists don't count this as a big cat at all because it's never been known to roar. Our next big cat may look like a leopard, but check out the rosettes. They're bigger and bolder, often there's a dot right in the middle. This is a cat that certainly can roar. The jaguar is the big cat of Central and South America. They can be found in deserts, on savannah and in the jungle. And they love the water. They'll fish for anything. In the wild, capybara, caiman, even big anacondas can be on the menu. The jaguar is the third largest cat but I'm about to get really close to the second. Down on the ground with wild lions. Now I'm after truly giant cats. Lions get four times the size of any of the spotted cats. To do that, to get right down with them, I'm going to South Africa's famous Kruger National Park. But before I do that, believe it or not, Around here, there are over a hundred lion traps. These are really cool. They're ant lions. They're just as ferocious as their namesakes, but only if you're an ant. Watch this. See those tiny jaws? They're just as deadly as a lion's, but on a smaller scale. Ant lions dig a pit and wait for a target. Then they shoot sand grains, knocking the prey towards those curved jaws. It falls down into the pit, and they use these curved jaws to suck the body fluids from their prey. Now, if I'm fast, there we go. This is always exciting. Yep, there he is. They don't grow much bigger than that, and they are like alien creatures. They're actually larvae. After a year or so, they transform into a winged insect. Just imagine if these pits were man-sized and you were walking along, fell down one of those, and you had your body fluid sucked dry while you choked to death on dust. That must be one of the worst ways to die. But I'll put him down, and then he'll dig another pit. It only takes them three or four hours to dig again. Instead of Kruger, I'm going on a brilliantly exciting mission to nearby Liguala Guala Reserve to get right in the midst of a pride of lions. Game warden Jerry Komashu needs to dart a big lioness, perhaps one of the largest in Africa, to change her radio collar. To tempt her close, we're playing her song. Jerry, the noise from those because it curdles the blood, what's that? It's a distress call from a buffalo calf. And, and the lions can hear that from miles away, can they? Yeah, they pick up the sound and then they'll obviously react to it. All we can do now is wait, and it doesn't take long. Jerry's team have laid out a zebra carcass to keep the pride occupied, so at last we can turn off that chilling soundtrack. Getting closer, aren't they? Coming in. This huge male gets me thinking. He reminds me of one of the famous man-eaters of Savo in East Africa. Around 140 railway workers were killed in just nine months by two males just like him. I'm starting to have second thoughts about what I'm about to do. There's the lioness Jerry's after. Yeah, she's in a good position now, so I'll try and take out.
A darted lion may be attacked by the rest of the pride. So they need to be frightened away. And that's where I come in. If you approach wild lions confidently enough, they shouldn't attack a standing person. This is the time to test the theory. My heart is in my mouth. This is a pride of adult lions. It's not just my heart, but every internal organ I possess is in my mouth now. The male's still watching us, but we've got to get on. Jerry needs to change her radio collar. The batteries are dead. This is my chance to compare myself to one of the biggest lionesses in Africa. The size of those feet, look at that. <laughs> and now we're going to try to weigh her, yeah? That's going to be a difficult. <laughs> Her weight will provide a good idea of her health. She must be in good shape, because it takes six of us to lift her. It's a race against time. She won't be out for long. She's definitely asleep, isn't she? She's making a lot of... <laughs> I think she's waking up. Don't wake up now, please. <laughs> got a massive head, hasn't she, for yeah. a lioness? Yeah, that is incredible, a really broad she's head. She's uh, one of the stocky boats. Yeah. You know, what, like... what, what's the weight there? Uh, 160. That's nearly 400 pounds. <laughs> More than two of me. <laughs> The fur feels really greasy. It has terrific waterproofing. And there's another thing about it that I didn't realise. It's only now that Jerry tells me that there are parasites that live in it. For that, it can crocus worm that they can actually. It's a tiny worm. And what would happen? It would it bore into bore into me basically. Yeah, it, it lands up into your uh, system and it actually migrates to your body cavities. Oh, thanks. I have worms migrating to my body because I've been stroking lung, her for 20 minutes. Your lungs and your, uh, your, your brain is amazing. I've got close up to a sleeping but massive lioness. Now I've got to get close to a conscious and full-grown male. To do that, the next day I head to the lion park near Johannesburg. But before meeting the king of the beasts, I'm going to start with a newborn prince. There are 74 lions here, and this is the newest addition. This is the king of the beasts at only 24 hours old. A white lion bred here. Sadly, there are none of these left in the wild. And you can see, these white lions, they're not albinos. They've got black eyes and those little white whiskers there. Oh. Have enough now. <laughs> and this little fella's going to grow pretty fast. Oh. In just two... <laughs> the whack by a lion's tail. In just two years' time, those tiny cubs will be as big as these. Lions are the only cats. Lions are the only cats that normally like living in groups. They sometimes squabble over food like that. This is a pride of young males. You can see here. They're just developing their manes. These are two years old, but it won't be until they get to three and a half years old until they get that really magnificent full mane. But these are spectacular, but I still need to compare myself 
with a full-grown male lion. See you later. This is scary, but this is my chance. My heart's hammering. I wouldn't meet one of these chaps on my own, so Kevin Richardson's helping me. What do I have to do? I was chased by an Alsatian when I was these way as much as 11 <laughs> Alsatians, don't yeah. they? Yeah, that's true. Just come around here. Come around the back here. Yeah. Look at the side. And they stand... Napoleon. This is Napoleon. Napoleon, wow. And they're above my... Hello, mate. And can I, yeah, can yeah. I stroke him go, or... Go for it, yeah. So slow, approach him slowly. Go on, second. sniff me. Yeah. My, I can, yeah. hope they can't sense that I'm at way. A bit frightened by this. Can you can you show us the bits and pieces? Get him down. Yeah, I'll try and okay. He's go slowly, boy. Slowly, boy. Wow, look at that. Right to the ground. Come on. Damn boy. There you go. Brilliant. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Where can I go next to him? Yeah, just behind him there's fine. And you don't pussyfoot around with these like a domestic. Oh. Yeah, just give him a good firm smack. A firm smack. So if you stroke Very them smart. like a cat, they don't like that. They, they don't like, like a bit. firm. They don't like that one bit. And this great thick mane is that's for when they're fighting, protect the neck and the vulnerable parts. Is that what people that's, think? That's what yeah, that's what the generally the thought is. And when you see those teeth, um, I'd like a mane if he got a bit. <laughs> wow, look. Okay. Wow. Okay, boy. Okay, mate. Okay. <laughs> Gets your heart going when he does that. <laughs> yeah, the thing to watch for in these guys is definitely their paws. Their paws are so quick. Can you show us the, the, the claws there? The claws? Okay. Yeah. I'm a bit well, nervous here. Can you get that there? Hold on. Yeah. They are like meat hooks. And they use that to grip the meat and then bring it close to their mouth. Bring Is it that... close to the mouth. It's like almost like a thumb. And can, can you get him on his back like a domestic cat? Yeah. <laughs> can you, you roll over there? You get a bit. Yeah. Come on, boy. Where could I come? There we go. <laughs> you said you've got to hit Yeah, him give hard. him a good scratch and a good. <laughs> yeah, no? Yeah, you love that. Yeah, no, they're, totally. they're quite well endowed, aren't they? Yeah. As well. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, Napoli, easy. Yeah, easy. He's got, a, he's got a claw in here. Has he? Okay. Yeah, he's got a claw in my leg there, okay. and he's and he's biting. Oh. Okay, okay. <laughs> there we go. Pull it out there. Thank there you very much. Got any battle scars? You see, you got to watch for those <laughs> paws. <laughs> Oh, he got me there. What is that? Is that the Jew claw? Do you think, Kevin? That, that's correct. Yeah. You can see there's a little puncture mark there. Oh, that's oh. definitely from the Jew claw. <laughs> be nice to Nigel. Uh, uh, be nice to Nigel. Be nice to Nigel. That claw was in my leg in a split second, and Napoleon can be just as quick with his jaws. And this this loose skin is is amazing, isn't it? That's so if they're bitten. It's a kind of it... a protective mechanism. Oh. Now Kevin gives me an even better idea of how big lions are. I'm six foot two wow. and they tower over they're me. Like they're much taller than I am, aren't they? Much, much taller. They are massive. This, when it was on the ground it looked big, but they are phenomenal. Wow! <laughs> Amazing. They can be seven feet long, have a three foot tail, and weigh quarter of a ton. But there's an even larger cat, and that's found in Asia, and that's what I'm going to see next. The tiger is the biggest of them all. India, four cats down, one to go. I've never seen this giant cat in the wild before, and for me, it's like meeting royalty. The tiger must be the most majestic and charismatic of all the predators. I'm in Bandavgarh Reserve, which is slap bang in the middle of India. This is the area that gave Rudyard Kipling his inspiration for the Jungle Book. And when I was a little boy, that cartoon with those memorable songs inspired me too. I really wanted to be Mowgli. All the animal characters are here. Singing vultures were Mowgli's friends. In real life, white-backed and long-billed vultures hardly make a sound. The Langa monkey is still king of the swingers and the closest thing to a man cub in the jungle.
Remember Carl the Python and those hypnotic eyes? Balu was a sloth bear, and here's Colonel Happy. Cheetle or spotted deer are a favourite prey of the jungle's top predator. That's what I'm after, Sheer Khan, the Bengal tiger. Band of Gar covers 150 square miles and is home to around 50 tigers. Looking for lions and leopards in Africa, I was jolted around in jeeps for weeks and you get a really numb bum. So I am so pleased that here in India, there is a very special, and I hope comfortable, four by four. Namaste. This is brilliantly comfortable. I don't know how to describe it, it's like sloshing around on a waterbed. It moves in all directions. The elephant driver or mahout is Vishnu, and this isn't Colonel Happy. It's Sundaguj, which means beautiful elephant. There could be a hundred tigers hiding in here. The grass is so tall, it can even hide an elephant, which is why it's called elephant grass. I feel pretty safe 10 feet off the ground although there's still a risk. Tigers do occasionally have a go at elephants. For watching wildlife, this is perfect. A little green bee-eater scans the sky for insects. As usual, I'm getting distracted from my quest and I've just spotted a creature I once had as a pet. Vishnu, snake. This is a brilliant rat snake. He's just been climbing the trees, trying to get a, a belly full of eggs. That's what they do. They're very, very good climbers. It's striking at me, but with a closed mouth. They're not aggressive snakes, but look what a beautiful creature. Sticking its tongue out, sensing the air. I can feel in there. It doesn't feel like it's eaten any chicks or anything, but it may have eaten a clutch of eggs. I've never got off an elephant faster than that. In fact, I've never got off an elephant before. But that was superb. It's puffing itself up a bit. You see its throat there is expanding. It's doing that to frighten me. And this is a wonderful rat snake. I'll let him go. Go on then. Catching the snake was so exciting I'd forgotten that tigers were seen here yesterday, but back on board, I soon catch a glimpse. This is a cub, perhaps 10 months old. The tigress, we're not sure where she is. She'll be hiding in the shade somewhere. The way they move, they just glide. Look at that. He's going to join his brother or sister. And they've got these marvellous, marvellous ears with these luminous white spots. They use that when they're displaying to each other. When they're getting aggressive, they can flash their ears. And that's a sign to keep away from a kill or keep away from a, a cub. Tigers are superlative hunters. Even at this age, the cubs spend most of their time practising pouncing and stalking. Their mother won't be far. She stays with them for two years or so. They were weaned after two months. Now she has to provide them with flesh. Tigers used to range across a vast territory, all across Asia, from Indonesia to Russia. Look, there is one of the cubs going to drink. There's only about 6,000 tigers left in the world and half of those are found in India. We still haven't seen the mother of the cubs, but she must be close. Vishnu, Vishnu, look the tigress. She is gorgeous. The markings on a tiger's face are as unique as a fingerprint. 
This is the tigress. She looks pretty big, but Shere Khan, a male tiger, would be one and a half times her size. She just looked at me then. That makes your heart go. As we tiptoe after her, the tigress seems to have something to hide. She's made a kill. It looks like a cheetle stag. The mother's dragged the carcass out into the open look and she's feeding her cubs. They're about 10 months old at the moment. They'll be in another eight months they can make their first kill, one and a half years of age, that's where they make their first kill. But for the moment, they're sharing with the tigress. Time to head back. The cubs have full stomachs and they look superb following their mother. The family just seemed to melt into the sea of grass. But now, my 4x4 four four needs some fuel. <laughs> I was going to eat these dates myself, but Sunder Guj, beautiful elephant, he's looked after me and he deserves them more than I do. <laughs> Come on then. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now it's bath time. This has been a long, hot day, but what a wonderful way to cool off. This is the cutest of babies. This is terrific fun but I've still to find a big male tiger, Shere Khan. The dawn of my last day in India, and I'm visiting a temple. I've only got one wish, to see Shere Khan. And I'm making an offering to the local gods in the hope they'll smile on me. We can't waste a second we're off so early, there's still dew on the bamboo. Male tigers roar much more frequently than females, and we can hear roaring in the distance. The jungle's alive with alarm calls, we must be getting closer. This is flipping exciting. We keep getting glimpses of the tiger just ahead of us. There he is, but this is so frustrating. He's not bothered by us, but he always seems to be just behind a tree, so I can't get a proper look. Surely there's no way we can follow him now. We're going to lose him, just like the leopard. <coughs> Sunda Gudge has done it. Elephants really are the greatest 4 by 4s Look at that. He's spraying the trees, warning other males that this is his territory. It looks as if this Shere Khan has a belly full of meat. At last, I'm just a few feet away from a big male Bengal tiger. He probably weighs 500 pounds. That's two and a half of me. It's been like a dream. 
not only have we seen the tigress with the cubs, we've tracked this wonderful male through the bamboo. There was bamboo hitting the elephant. We went over very difficult terrain. And this is the result. What a close and fantastic view of a full grown Bengal tiger. He's about 10 years old. They can get to be 15 or so in the wild. And he is the father of those cubs that we've been watching. Tracking tigers on elephant back, that is a perfect way to watch tiger behavior. You can look at him yawning there. He's totally oblivious of us. You can see the characteristic stripes of the Bengal, the way they split and join at both ends. But what a powerful animal. This is sheer calm. This is what we've been trying to see. A male Bengal tiger looks huge, but there's another rare and very elusive subspecies that grows even bigger. And that's what I want to see next. And you will not believe the difference in their habitat. Russia. I'm here to spy on the biggest cat of them all. I'm still on the trail of tigers, but what a contrast from the jungles of India to Red Square in Moscow. It's blimmin' cold and I haven't got enough clothes on, but where I'm going, it's gonna be even colder. I feel like a secret agent. I'm meeting a face from my past, naturalist Nikolai Drozdov. Privet Nikolai, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Ten years. Ten years. You haven't changed no, at all. You're the same, yeah. <laughs> and what are you doing now? I've come to see a tiger in the wild in Russia. Have you seen one? Yeah, only once and 10 years ago. It's very difficult to see tiger because they are very shy. You can see only the trails on the river beds, on the snow. You will find them easily, but then you should go kilometers and kilometers and they will go off of you because they are very shy. And you've only seen a tiger once? Yes, because it's very difficult. We're going to I do wish our, you good luck. We're yes. going to do our best. Yes. Do that. Do Dos that. Do Nikolai. That Thank you. Let's see that. Now I must fly east, right across Russia. My destination, the city of Vladivostok. It was blooming cold in Moscow. Here in Vladivostok, it is perishing. Just watch this, boiling water. It's minus 35 here, so cold that boiling water freezes in mid-air. <laughs> I've still got a long way to go. 11 hours north by minibus to the Sikoti Alin Reserve by the Sea of Japan. This unique reserve covers 1,500 square miles. Down there somewhere are about 30 Siberian tigers. To find one, I'll need expert help. John Goodrich and Andrei Safanov work for the Siberian Tiger Project. They've got high-tech radio tracking gear a spy would be proud of. John, I can't believe it. This, this is a thrill. You must have seen thousands of these, but this uh -huh. is my first tiger oh, print in the snow. All the same, every one I see, they're just wonderful. Yeah, it's a, and, and this is a female? Yeah, it's an adult female. The track is about nine and a half centimeters wide. So if we're We've picked up a signal from the tigress, but how far away is she? You want to be careful, don't get your foot wet. Here's a traditional mark tree that she sent, marked right here. You see this dark stain? As a pit all goes, it smells quite nice, doesn't it? Yeah, it's kind of a nice musky smell. <laughs> Scratch marks there around the other side. Oh, wow, look, and this is like to keep the claws sharpened. Uh-huh, and they, they'll come up to a, a mark tree, sniff the mark, maybe spray it themselves, and then they kind of stand up on their hind legs and, and hug the tree and scratch the backside while rubbing their face on the front side, and you can see there's some marks here from where they've been. They've got glands on their face, okay. they put smell there. I would have thought they'd just strafe like that, but it's like they hug the yeah. tree to do yeah. it. We've still got a signal, but we're not getting any closer. The tigress is moving much faster than we are. Her wide feet stop her sinking into the snow. I'm going to copy the cat. Hey! 
even kept my snowshoes on. <laughs> that was great fun. <laughs> hey. Well done, Andre. This has been a magical day, even though we never caught up with the tigress. Thank you very much. I'll never forget that day. You're welcome very much. It was great having you. Unbelievably, while we were tracking the tigress, a male has attacked and killed a dog in the local town of Ternay. It is now classified as a conflict tiger and will be shot unless we can chase it away to the safety of the Sakoti Aline Reserve. How many conflict tigers have been this year, John? There's a lot coming near houses. This year we've had two so far in Ternay, or this winter. And the conflict tigers, they mainly kill livestock and things like that? Yeah, this, this tiger we're working on today has killed three dogs and a cow already. Three dogs and a cow? Yeah. So because the tigers are coming back, you're going to get more of these sort of conflicts? I think so, yeah. But you've worked out a way now that you don't have to kill the tigers? Yeah. We start by trying to scare them away using rockets. And they, these are the rocket cartridges they used? Yeah. And yep. they just shot the rockets straight up in the air. So if I'd been here, I'd have seen a tiger. If I could have been with them, we're a day late, really. The rockets failed, so we're going to try a different shock tactic. The aim is to frighten the tiger right back into the heart of the reserve, well away from people. For me, it's another chance to spy on a wild Siberian tiger. The tiger that was around the village, John and his team, they're radio tracking it now. Normally, those conflict tigers, a few years ago, they'd have been shot. But on this mission, we're hoping to frighten it away, save it so it won't have to be killed. There he is. He's just ahead of us. We're going in low. The helicopter should scare him away. Even from up here, he looks like a giant. This is it. I never thought we'd do it. This is a Siberian tiger in the natural habitat. That is a magnificent animal. Hopefully, we've given him the fright of his life and he won't go back to town and keep taking dogs. A viable population of Siberian tigers needs at least 400 square miles of undisturbed habitat. I just hope their future is secure. I still want to get on the ground with them, and to do that, I have a really unconventional meeting with Victor Yudin, who runs a tiger reserve. You've got to do something in the Siberian oh, winter, haven't you? <laughs> Yeah, that is very good. <laughs> I'm willing to put up with anything if it means I can meet Victor's tigers. <laughs> I like this. It looks bad, but I like it. Do you do the back? Yes. Apparently, it's good for your paws. <laughs> this is good. Can we see the tigers tomorrow? Yes, yes. You can see all. Five tigers. Five, you've got five in the reserve. Biggest tigers. <laughs> That's what we need. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> this is Victor Yudin's reserve, and I just heard a tiger roar. That was spine chilling, because they normally do that when they're on a kill. And Victor's given me special permission to go onto the ground with Siberian tigers. This time, I haven't got a radio signal to follow, just my instincts. This is it. 
This is what I've travelled halfway across the world for, to see the Siberian tiger in the snow. This is the giant amongst cats, the third largest flesh eater on the planet. There's a male and female here. The male's got his back to me. They can be over 10 feet long. They are such powerful predators. Deer is one of the main prey items, but they can easily eat wild boar, and they've even been known to attack and kill an adult brown bear. I can hear them. I can hear them licking the carcass. That's because they've got that really rough tongue, and they use that to lick the flesh away from the carcass. They don't use smell when they're hunting. They listen and use their incredible sight. At night, they can see six times better than we can. And then they stalk up on their prey, ambush it, jump out, grab it around the throat, and then throttle it. But they're so powerful, sometimes if it's a smaller prey item, they just break the spine in the pounce. Siberian tigers, they rarely attack people. I'm pleased about that because they can cover 10 meters over 30 feet in a single bound. Luckily, these are concentrating on gorging that flesh. They'll take 40 pounds of meat in a single go, and then they won't feed for a couple of days. They've got brown stripes rather than black than the Indian tigers, and they're farther apart. They're lighter in colour. It's minus 30, but I don't feel cold at all. When you see things like this, this is such a magnificent sight. These are rare animals too. After World War II, there are only 50 of them left in the wild. Now, because they've been protected by the Russian authorities, there's between three and 400, but they are still poached. I cannot believe how anyone could trap or shoot creatures as magnificent as this. That is amazing. They're dragging that as if it's just a beef burger or something. They've eaten quite a lot of that deer now, and I'm worried they're going to start paying attention to me. So I'm going to leave them to finish their meal. But this is something I am never going to forget. Mission accomplished. Leopard, snow leopard, jaguar, lion, and the biggest of them all, the tiger. I've seen all five big cats, travelled thousands of miles and used up several of my nine lives to look straight into the eyes of the world's most glorious predators.